For most of human existence, the meaning of life was very, very simple. Survival. The only thing that humans cared about was just surviving because it was so damn difficult for the early years of human existence on this earth. If you look at ourselves as biological agents, everything about our body is set up for one mission, and that is survival. Every reflex we have, every element of our uh, structure is just built up on the, the battle to survive. And then humans did something remarkable. They elevated themselves through the use of technology and social structure to the top of the food chain. If you look at a human being as a survival organism, just by itself, naked, they are among the most feeble at that task in the entire animal kingdom. You compare us with predatory animals. We are weak and soft and easily killed. But if you take that same human and put them in a group and you give them basic technology, steel, a spear, a knife, he goes from the bottom of the food chain to pretty much at the top. And so humanity found itself in a crisis that emerged out of its own success. For most of its history, their only interest was the battle to survive, and they, they did it. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. They got through ice ages, droughts, famines, disease, everything. And they found a way to get to the top of the food chain. And that's where it all got interesting. Because <laughs> an organism whose only interest was in survival yeah. had, for the first time in their history, a more or less guaranteed survival. And so the big question now is, now what? We survived. There's no more danger. The average human being finds himself in a world now where there's almost zero danger from predatory animals, where getting a meal is the easiest thing ever. We're getting to and from work. It's not problematic at all. Where the majority of infectious diseases, medical complaints can be resolved in a hospital fairly easily. And so they start casting their mind around, okay, what do I do now? And so the minute mankind's existence became more or less guaranteed the problems shift from survival to meaning and we found ourselves grappling with a whole new issue that had never occurred to our ancient forefathers but which now becomes one of the centerpieces of our modern lives what one person will describe as a meaningful life another person will the cry is, is meaningless or, or wasted. Um, there's something terrible about the idea that we're, we're sitting around you know, waiting for meaning to show up on our doorstep. But what I find the best people do is they take charge of it and they, they look at their lives in, the, in a form of authorship where they see their life as a tale to be written and they do their best to write that tale and put as much control over the the direction of this story as they can. In the end, we all have to just try and write our own story. We all have our own interests. I try to bring in the sense that even though I'm an atheist, I don't believe that we go on to, to live after this. I'm, I, I believe that there's a possibility of a God and an afterlife, I don't say it's impossible, but in order for me to believe that they exist, I'd have to see better evidence than I see currently. Um, nonetheless, I do believe that there is a great value 
in the idea of living for something bigger than yourself. The moment you see yourself as the be all and end all of your existence, you're in for a meaningless life and nothing will ever satisfy you. You can have all the money in the world, you can have all the power in the world, you'll be empty inside. I do believe that humans have a deep and abiding need to follow the interests of a group bigger than themselves as an individual. Is it ideal? No. Is it an answer to the meaning of life? No, nope. because eventually that group will itself die out. So there's a sense in which it, it just plays a kind of delaying game. But I do believe that in order to live a happy life, meaning is a central part of that and the deepest sense of meaning, not a fully complete answer, but a better answer than most people give is to, to find something which hopefully does very little harm to the people around you and mostly benefits them, which enables you to become part of a community and to live, as I said, for something larger than, than you as an individual. Um, I'm a human being, and like any human being, I'm biologically programmed to be terrified of death. Every physical element in our bodies is designed to keep us away from death. Um, I'm no different from anyone else in that regard. I'm fully aware that there's going to be a time I don't wake up, but are you going to be afraid of it? Is there some mortal terror you have of this? No, you didn't have it before. You don't have it when you sleep. Um, going from the fact that you know you won't wake up to terror is two different things. That's an extra step. And at that point, you're, you're making a choice at that, uh, at that point. Much deeper question, which is presumably, are you afraid of non-existence? What comes after your physical death? And that's the more interesting question. Um, no. Uh, I should start right uh, by, by, by saying from, from the start, uh, I'm a materialist. I don't believe that we have an immortal soul. I don't believe there's a life after our physical death. Um, in this sense, from someone who starts from that point of view, you have to understand that everyone has two deaths. We always talk about our death as though there was only one but we all have two deaths. There was a time before you were born when you were dead. You weren't afraid of that period of non-existence because you know what it was like before you were born. There was just nothing. Every, every, every time you go to sleep at night, you get a sneak preview of death. It's just this kind of nothing happens. You wake up in the morning, you're, you're alive again. I do believe that death is the single most important element in life that gives value to our days. If you think, for example, of a situation where a god came to you and gave you immortality, life would be very, very different. The moment you gain immortality, you can always put every project off. You can always say, I don't need to do this today because I can do it four centuries from now. And as you extend artificially a human life, the motivation to get things done here and now and work industriously and, and excel fades away because you can always come back to the idea that you can do this in the future. It'd be a terrible burden to be immortal. You would, um, life would be in many ways very hollow and meaningless, I think. People talk about death taking away the meaning of life, but I think immortality would have a very similar effect in a different direction. I will disappear, but there's, there's far greater things than me that will disappear. I mean, it, it, it's crushing to think that there's going to come a time where no one will ever hear Beethoven's symphonies again, that the, the mysteries of the pharaohs will be lost and no one will even comprehend that they once existed. They, Humanity has come up with so many amazing things over its existence and to think that one day this is just all happening on a tiny speck in a distant corner of a very small uh, galaxy and among millions of galaxies that this is all for nothing. Okay, I can understand there's a kind of dread that comes with this. Um, uh, 
but there's also a sense in which the moment you're born and the moment you can think about these things, you know this is your inevitable fate. We're all very, very small players in a very big game. The number of suicides per year, it's a shocking, shocking statistic that gets almost no recognition. And yes, uniquely human, you don't, very, very few animals you see killing themselves because their whole thing is just survival. And that humans, paradoxically, when survival is more or less guaranteed, are killing themselves in vast numbers. It's usually linked back to the idea of meaning because it's so hard. It's, it was hard to win the battle for survival but it's 10 times harder to win the battle for meaning.